Hey Internet, it's Color40 back for more Spy Fox and Dry Cereal. So last episode we saved the president of Moo Incorporated, <laughs> uh, Mr. Utterly, and he apparently ate the secret note that will help us defeat the evil supervillain. Yep, doesn't that stink? Well, anyways, we gotta find a way to get uh, that note out of him. Hey, according to Spy Corps database, William the Kid has three overdue library books. I always suspected Kid had some latent criminal tendencies. Oh, man. How's your assignment going? Have you stopped that loony lunatic William the Kid yet? No, not yet. But don't worry. I'll get that goat's goat one way or another. <laughs> you know, once I invented a fax machine disguised as a tuna casserole. Really? I'll have to get your recipe. You know, once I was trying to invent an electric tissue paper, but every time I went to blow my nose, I would almost get electrocuted. How shocking. Oh. Professor Quack, what's the forecast? Well, my spy radar here says that there is a strong possibility of there being some weather today. Don't bother me right now. I'm busy inventing a new spy gadget that will send secret messages with aromas. You mean a gadget that writes with smell? Yes. It's a pen that uses invisible stink. How's your assignment going? Mm. Yep, here's the vending machine. X-ray gum. How does this work, Professor Quack? Ah, that's my new and improved beef flavor X-ray gum. Beef flavored? Yuck. I'll explain how it works. You take a stick out, put it up against something beefy, move it around, and then you can see the yucky stuff inside. The best part of all is, when you are done, you can chew the gum. It actually has a very refreshing, beefy flavor. You know, four out of five dentists prefer x-ray gum for their patients who need x-rays. A duck needs his fiber. Yep, so we can get our spy gadgets out of the vending machine, and it'll put us in, put it in our spy gadget inventory. We can only carry four at a time, and Professor Quack loves eating the blueprints. If there was just some way to see inside you, maybe we could call the Psychic Cows Network and let one of their friendly representatives make a prediction. <laughs> so, exactly how long does the average cow's digestive system take to process food? You mean, uh... Well, that would be opening up a really messy topic of discussion. <laughs> Mr. Utterly, why did you have to swallow the code in the first place? Couldn't you have put it in your pocket? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. That would have been a lot easier in the end, huh? <laughs> he doesn't even have if pockets. If I don't get that code out of you, I may never be able to disarm that milky weapon of destruction. How long is your arm? We need to find a way to see that code inside you, Mr. Utterly. Mm -hmm. I was afraid you were going to say that. I have to warn you, I have a pretty low tolerance for pain. <laughs> I once passed out from a paper cut I got while licking a stamp. Oh, that, well, if you got it on your ton, then that's got to be the worst. If there was just some way to see inside you, maybe we could call... Alright, so you probably figured it out. We need to use Here's the x-ray gum on Mr. Utterly. Now, if you don't mind, Mr. Utterly, I'm going to need to use this x-ray gum to take a look at those four stomachs of yours. This isn't going to hurt, is it? Because I get kind of dizzy when I think about pain. In fact, just saying the word pain makes me want to... Oh. What a wuss. Professor Quack, your x-ray gum works perfectly. I can see everything inside Mr. Utterly's gut. Yep, this uh, this is how the x-ray gum works. Just move around and we can see inside him. It's got a clock in there. His ticker looks like it needs winding. If I had a wrench in me, I would wretch. One of the best lines of the game. I don't know why his beef is outlined with like sloppy if joes. I had a wrench in me, I would wretch. And here's the note. I found the note. Once I find that key, I can look for that control panel it goes into. Then William the Kid's milky weapon of destruction will be disarmed. Remember what that key looks like, because you're gonna need it to remember like it later I need on. To find that key. There we go. See, that wasn't so bad, Mr. Utterly. 
Oh, I'm so nervous about those poor dairy cows. They're so defenseless. You've just got to save them, Spy Fox. Please. All right. Don't have a cow about it. Oh. Spy Fox, if you need anyone to watch your back while you're out there, just let me know. My entire body's a weapon. Uh, yeah. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Utterly, especially if I need some help in counterintelligence. Snap. Hey, does anybody have an idea where a cow could get a fresh pack of cuddlicious around here? <laughs> you know, Mr. Utterly, the Surgeon General has determined that cud chewing is not only habit forming, but can also be pretty darn disgusting. You know, if you don't stop this deranged William the Kid, I'm gonna be out of a job. Do you know if they have an unemployment office on this island? Don't worry, Mr. Utterly. A big steer with your experience can easily make some money on this island. What with the price of beef these days. Ooh, that got kinda dark. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Fox. I couldn't help noticing that you have a cow lick in your hair. That's impossible. Your tongue can't be that long. Duh. <laughs> hey, Spike Fox. Did you know that you can put some cream in a jar and shake it for about five minutes and make your own butter? I prefer my butter stirred, not shaken. Oh. Oh, I'm so nervous about. All right. I'll... That's enough hanging around Mobile Command Center. We need to get out there now. And now everything's open. You can see that stand's open. The canteen is open. That place is still locked, unfortunately. But yeah, the trinket stand's open. Let's talk to this guy. Welcome to the Trinket Emporium. My name is Gilbert. How may I be of service to you, O oh, honorable visitor, to this, our dear island home? I'm not sure yet. I was just noticing your fine selection of trinkets. Sir, I think that you will find we offer much more than mere trinkets. We pride ourselves in having the island's finest selection of rare and hard-to-find collector items and antiquities. Excellent! One never knows when they will be struck with an unquenchable desire to indulge in a blatant act of bourgeois consumerism. Our thoughts exactly, sir. <laughs> this guy is easily one of my favorite characters in the game. He's just so deadpan and snarky. So, what's the secret to your business's success? Three things. Location. 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 That's one thing. <laughs> I imagine that you get pretty busy during the tourist season. Actually, no. Tell me, what's the difference between a souvenir and a trinket? Souvenir is a French word meaning to remember. Trinket is a Middle English word which means small shoemaker's knife. I hope that clears it up for you, sir. Say, do you happen to have any white marble cycladic figurines? From either Siphanos or Syros, dating somewhere between 2800 to 2300 BC? I have no idea what you are talking about, sir. Perhaps there is something else I could interest you in? How can I be sure that all these trinkets you're selling are real? Sir, we at the Trinket Emporium unconditionally guarantee the veracity and reality of every item we sell here. If you find that anything you have purchased from us is in fact an illusion or in any way unreal, please return it to us immediately and we will give you a complete, no questions asked, refund. <laughs> I imagine that you get pretty busy during the tourist season. Actually, no. I like the jar of trinkets, but I'm wondering if you have them in cans. It's uncanny that you would ask me that, because just this morning I ordered some. Unfortunately, they won't be here till next week. Oh, lame. What could anyone possibly do with a whole jar of trinkets? It could be a paperweight. You could make a unique lamp out of it. It could be turned on its side to roll out cookie dough. There must be a million and one pieces. <laughs> I gotta admit, he's quick thinking. Interesting. Is that an entire jar of trinkets? Yes, my Aunt Elisa pickles them every September. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. I like the jar of trinkets, but I... Alright, we can buy the trinkets if we want. So, what's a jar of trinkets going for these days? Uh, normally, sir, they're 20 drachmas, but for you, how about 50? Sounds good to me. I'll take it. Does he say 15 or 50? It sounds like he says 50. There you go, sir. Why, thank you. And we get a jar of trinkets. We can use it to roll out cookie dough now. Could you tell me a little about those pennants? Yes, those were actual pennants weighed by Emperor Theodosius himself at the 393 AD Olympics. This hat belonged to a sailor who was thrown into a vat of hot cocoa. Really? What happened? He was court marshmallowed. 
That was just terrible. There is an ancient Greek proverb that says, a wise person should always have several pennants in their pocket just in case a parade goes by. That's funny. <laughs> I've studied most of the classics in my lifetime, and I don't recall ever running across that one. Yes, it is one of the more obscure ones. <laughs> These patent-pending pennants made potentially perfect pets. Particularly if you place the popular pennants in a periodic public competition of precision speed. You mean hold a pennant race? Precisely. That's preposterous. I thought Emperor Theodosius banned the Olympic Games. Why would he go around waving pennants? Even though he canceled the Olympics, he still had to fulfill several contractual obligations he had with several commercial sponsors. Thus, <laughs> pennant waving. <laughs> this guy is so quick on his feet, it, it's hilarious. There is an ancient Greek pro- Alright. Do you sell a lot of those sailor hats? Actually, yes. Especially to sailors. It seems like every time the sailors get some time off on the island, they accidentally leave their hats behind. I guess that's <laughs> why they call it shore leave. Wow. Is that a sailor's hat or a sailor's cap? Neither. It is my hat. And if you buy it, then it will be your hat. <laughs> what do you get when you throw a white sailor's hat into the Red Sea? A wet hat. I yep. once heard some interesting trivia about sailor's hats. That must have been a fascinating experience for you. Is that a gelatin mold? Close. It's a sailor's hat. You could always pour gelatin in it, I suppose. <laughs> what do you get when you throw a white sailor's hat? Sir, could I interest you in this nice-looking, uh, shoot. What are they called? It has something to do with the sound seltzers make when you plop them into water. Fizz? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Can I interest you in a nice fizz? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, this is a fez, not a fizz. Aren't those conical, brimless hats called fezzes? If you say so. I've always thought of them as those funny-looking hats worn by old gentlemen driving those small cars in parades. <laughs> wow. What's nice about these hats is that if you tilt the top up, they give some little rectangular candies which taste a little like soap. I think you've gotten a fez mixed up with something that sounds quite similar. <laughs> Sir, could I interest you in this nice looking, uh... Do you have any bigger fish? You should have seen the one that got away. That's such an intelligent looking fish. It obviously <laughs> swam in the best schools. You obviously have good taste in fish, sir. Although, <laughs> I would not advise tasting this particular one. Do you have any bigger fish? You should have seen the one that got away. That's such an intelligent. Darn it, there's only two things that he says about the fish, really? Wait a minute. Is that a genuine Teddy Roosevelt teddy bear? Circa 1902? Yes, they are very rare. It may even be on the endangered antiquities list. Even the stuffing of this teddy bear is of the finest quality. You know, stuffing is a delicious alternative to potatoes. This particular no, bear not. was once held by the next door neighbor of the cousin of the daughter of the secretary to the ambassador of President Teddy Roosevelt himself. Really? That's quite a heritage to bear. What kind of stitching is that on the teddy bear? A closed hatch stitch or a double pin doodle stitch? I was wondering that myself. <laughs> Even the stuffing of this teddy bear is a... How much is that cute stuffed kitty you have there? It is a little expensive, sir. But I would be happy to throw in some free stuffed kitty litter. What is particularly nice about this cat is that it is so well behaved. I can imagine. Another advantage to this fine kitty is that it would save you a bundle on cat food. Sure, because it's always stuffed. Duh. Another advantage to this fine kitty is that it would save you a bundle on cat food. Sure. Wait just one moment. Could that possibly be the ship's steering wheel from the Titanic? I have a sinking suspicion it might be, sir. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Would you like to give that wheel a free test drive? No, but if you buy it, you could take it out for a little spin. Oh. Then, uh, Professor Quack could probably use that ship's wheel in one of his inventions. Sir, I would steer clear of giving this sort of thing as a gift. I wonder what it would be like to steer a ship with one of those. Buy it, and you may have a hands-on experience. Oh my gosh! How many bad puns is a that? A ship's wheel like this is a very unique belly button antique. Belly button? Oh, I mean navel. Oh! You know, Professor Quack could probably use that ship's wheel in one of his inventions. 
Okay, it's wow, we have spent, it. like, 15 minutes of this episode on, like, two screens. That's what I get for trying to show off everything. What is pretty? All right, we can buy more stuff like There's this no hat. Telling when I might need one of these hats. You better give me 40 of them. 40, but I only have one left. All right, I'll take one of them. Good. I hope you and your little hat will be happy together. <laughs> He's very short. I've I've felt those struggles before. Have a nice day. Haven't we all at one point? I'd love to take your money, sir, but wouldn't you like to buy something? <laughs> it's drachmas. Greek money. How much for one of those pennants? They are quite rare. They cost seven million drachmas. Do you have? Seven million drachmas? Not on me. Then <laughs> it does not look as though you will be buying one. <laughs> Are those actually really famous pendants? Because nobody's going to pay that much. Come on, Gilbert. How much for the fez? As it turns out, this fez isn't for sale, sir. This is our floor model. In fact, it's been on the floor several times, and we have a dirty floor. <laughs> it looks like your floor is literally on top of the dirt. I really want one of those pendants. Could we haggle for them? Certainly. Make me an offer. Would you take 40 drachmas for them? No. 50? No. 100? No. Okay, okay. 7 million drachmas. I changed my mind. They are too valuable to sell. <laughs> really? I've just got to have one of those pennants. I collect them. They are not mine. They're my Uncle Ian's. He just <laughs> has them here for show. It's some sort of deceptive marketing ploy he read about in a book. <laughs> I want to meet his Uncle Ian. I really want one of those pennants. Could we haggle for them? No, we can't. I really would like to buy that fez. Of course you would. Who wouldn't enjoy a fine quality fez such as this? But, as I said, it is not for sale. Oh, come on, you're killing me, Gilbert. Don't you have any fezes in the back you could sell me? No, sir. There is no back to this shop. There is only a front. <laughs> Do you have seconds or damaged fezes you could sell me? Certainly not. I am a purveyor of only the finest quality headwear on the island. Jeez. <laughs> I really would like to buy that fez. Of course you would. Who wouldn't enjoy a fine quality fez such as this? But, as I said, it is not for sale. <sighs> fine. Buy, give me the fish. I've just decided what I'm going to get my mother for her birthday. I'll take that fish up there. Good. That thing is really beginning to smell. Let me get it down for you. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> if we want, we can literally ah. leave while he's doing this. Come on. Oh, forget it. I just remembered that there is a trade embargo on those particular fish. I'm not allowed to sell them to you. Aw, oh, come on. I want it. I really want to buy that fish. Okay, I'll try to get it down again. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to enjoy it. <laughs> ah! 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 Come on. He doesn't have a ladder back there or anything? Oh, forget it. We are all out of the fish. I can see it up there. I really want to buy that fish. Oh, forget it. We are all out of the fish. I don't think that's true. I can't bear to pass up a deal like this. I'll take the teddy bear. Let me just get that for you. <laughs> oh, forget it. Actually, that is my little sister's teddy bear. I put it up there for a joke. It isn't for sale. <laughs> a lot of weird marketing ploys are, uh, <laughs> you can see here. Also, I really wish that bear had red overalls. I'd like to purchase that fine stuffed kitty. All right, I'll get it for you. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Ah! 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 Come on. 
<laughs> this, uh, this is gonna be such a long let's play at this rate. <laughs> oh, forget it. I just remembered that you need a license to own a cat on this island. Even a stuffed toy cat. Really? How horribly inconvenient. My life needs a little direction right now. I think I'll buy that steering wheel. Let me wrap that up for you. Ah! 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 ah. Come on. It says trinkets. Oh, forget it. Sorry, the wheel's not for sale. You're welcome to come here to look at it whenever you like. Gee, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I simply must have that teddy bear. Oh, all right. It sure has been a bull market for bears recently. <laughs> oh my ah. gosh. Ah. Ah. Come on. Ah. Ah. Oh, forget it. We are fresh out of teddy bears. I can see it. <laughs> if you can get that ship's wheel down for me, I will give you all of the drachmas I have in my pocket. Really? I am certain that will make me rich beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> ah. Ah. Half the stuff even ah. I haven't heard before. This is Come great. On. Oh, forget it. Sorry, gravity is obviously not on my side today. I want the cat? One stuffed cat, please. Better make it to go. Would you like fries with that? No, thanks. <laughs> I actually ah. would like fries with that. Ah. Oh, no, no, no. One st He's like, ah. I can read your mind, sir. Ah. You want the cat again. Ah. Come on. <laughs> I love the animation here. It's great. Ah. And the sound effects, of course. Oh, forget it. I'm afraid that we are all out of the stuffed kitty dolls. That is such a lie! I can see it. Alright, let's head to the cantina. Hi, honey. Welcome to the cantina. I'm Bee Bear. If there's anything I can get you, sugar, like, for example, sugar, you just let me know. All right. Thanks, B. Anyways, sorry we didn't really do anything today, but we have to leave the episode off there. Thanks for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. Tune in next time. Thank you. We'll probably spend yeah. the whole episode in the cantina just talking to people and doing stuff. Hope to see you then. Have a great day and God bless.